keep waving. I want you to know who you are. You're going to be getting just a little bit wet today on our tour. Yeah. But that's okay. Don't worry about it too much. Oh, you folks on the left over here, we haven't forgotten about you. No. You guys are going to get soaked today on the tour. Yeah. So uh, now you can make your CD arrangements if you'd like. Please do it now before we get going, because once we are in motion, for your own safety, we must ask that you do remain seated at all times. Keep your hands, your feet, and everything else you have with you today inside the shuttle. And now that we are all seated, we're all clear. All right. One last thing, folks. Please, with the comfort and courtesy of everyone around you, no eating, drinking, or smoking. All right. Now all of that is over with, I can introduce myself. Hi, everyone. My name's Alana. I'll be your tour guide this afternoon. Behind me at the wheel of the shuttle is a mystery. Oh, no, it's not. It's our driver. That's a good place for him. His name's John. Everyone say hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, everybody. Everybody have a great tour. A lot of good day. Good and terrible. Enjoy this beautiful day here in sunny Central Florida. Sunny Florida. Well, it's, you know. I'd like to officially welcome you to our studios. We are the Orlando counterpart of the Walt Disney Studios out in Burbank, California. Here we feature sound stages, outdoor sets, state-of-the-art editing, recording studios, Basically everything you need to make a motion picture or a television show. Well, if you have your cameras today, I have some good news for you. There are no photo restrictions on our tour. In fact, we actually even encourage all kinds of photography and video. Your first photo opportunity is coming up high in the sky to your right. That's the symbol and landmark of our studios. It's our award-winning Earful Tower. It does stand 13 stories tall and is capped off by a giant set of Mickey Mouse ears that weigh 16 tons, and for all of you trivia buffs, that is a half size of 342 and 3 eighths. A little bit closer to the ground here on your right is our prop warehouse. Out front is the motor pool. The two futuristic looking police cars are from the movie Blade Runner, starring Harrison Ford. There's a red coyote car from the hit television series Hardcastle and McCormick. The black classic car with the green spokes is from The Untouchables, starring Sean Connery, Kevin Costner, and Robert De Niro. And all of the colorful vintage cars down on this row are from last summer's blockbuster Dick Tracy. Take a look off to your left, you'll see our bungalows, and that's just a fancy Hollywood term for office space. Bungalow number one is home to the Goofy Games, bungalow number two is CK Productions, and bungalow number three is the permanent home of the Mickey Mouse Club. Now they are on hiatus right now, that means vacation to you and me, but they'll be back shooting again in about two months. Take a look off to your right, you'll see John has steered us into a branch of our greens department. Get it? Ranch? Can't wait. This is where we store trees, plant shrubs, and flowers until they're needed on the set. If you look down, you can see that they are all stored in portable boxes. That's so we can easily transport them without causing any damage to our plants. We do use greens for practical reasons. For example, we might use a row of these tall trees or large bushes to hide the fact that only a small portion of our set has actually been built. Well, we even have our own cast of characters here in the greens department. These sculpted figures are called topiaries. They can take 10 years to fully develop. In fact, the elephant, he's been shaping up since 1983. Soon they will be joining more than 160 other topiaries located all throughout Walt Disney World property. Laying down on the ground at the end here, that is our own 30-foot flower stuff. Of course, it's not real, though. It's made of steel and styrofoam. His end is one of the giant props from the movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. All right now, we're going to pull inside for a moment, take a look at one of our more glamorous areas. This is the world of creative costuming here. Over 180 artists design and manufacture the costumes we use for motion picture, television, and live entertainment. The whole process starts with the designer sketches. You can see them hanging up along the top of the back wall. Then our talented seamstresses and tailors take over. They use more than 175,000 yards of fabric annually to produce more than 12,000 garments. Take a look at the showcases as we go by. You'll see the costumes worn by Madonna and Warren Beatty and Dick Tracy. Julie Andrews, 25-year-old Jolly Holiday dress from Mary Poppins. Michael Jackson's spacesuit from Captain EO. And the costumes worn by the human co-stars of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Here in Florida, we do have the world's largest working wardrobe with, get this ladies, over two and a half million garments. That number does grow every single day. Of course, it does take just a little bit more than we do to make a motion picture or a TV show. So right now we're going to take a look at some of our technical areas. The first one is our lighting department. And here we can generate about three and a half million watts of light. Now to put that into perspective for you, that is enough power to illuminate the entire city.
City of Orlando, all at one time. Next is our Dick Tracy makeup shop. This is where we're currently displaying the masks and maquettes used in the film to turn everyday characters, actors, into the comic book characters. I would like to congratulate Caglion and Drexler. They did win an Oscar award for their efforts in that movie. The next two windows are dedicated to our camera shops. This is where our technicians store and maintain the film and video equipment that we use for our productions. And if you think your video camera was expensive, well, ours can run anywhere from $60,000 to $150,000. Last in our tunnel is our scenic shop. This is where carpenters begin to build the sets that are later finished on the sound stages. The talented craftsmen that work here have been known to build just about anything, from a 40-foot submarine that was used in a rock video to a recreation of the interior of the United States Supreme Court building. And that was built for an upcoming mini-series that was shot right here in our studios. It's called Separate But Equal. It stars Sidney Poitier, Burt Lancaster, and that'll be on ABC television next month. Now, a set that built in the scenic shop that we use over and over again is referred to as a standing set. It can be as simple as a bedroom or a living room scene, or it could be as elaborate as an entire house. And right now, John is going to take us to see a very odd-looking neighborhood. When production companies travel to film on location, often they can run into difficulties that they have little or no control over. Things like crowds, traffic, noise, and even the weather. Well, they don't want to have to deal with those problems. So most often they prefer to shoot on a studio backlot. Now this part of our backlot is known as Residential Street. We do have some beautiful homes here. In fact, the first one coming up on your right, that one's for sale. And I know everyone would love to live, to live and work at Disney World, but, well, before you decide to move into this house, you may want to take a good look through it. It does give a whole new meaning to that sign, open house there. These are all just empty shelves or facades. We use them for exterior shots only. But because different scripts call for different neighborhoods, we have seven types of architectural design on our street from seven different regions of the, set of the country. The second house on your right is a Midwestern style home. That was used in the Touchstone Pictures comedy, Ernest Saves Christmas. That was Burns' house in the movie. And off to your left, that's an Art Deco Miami style home. That car in the driveway there, that's the 1963 Cadillac Coupe de Ville that all of that fuss was made over in the movie Tin Man, starring Danny DeVito, Richard Dreyfuss, and Barbara Hershey. Oh, don't worry about that. That's us, our company barbecue. Coming up on your left, that's a house many of you may recognize. It's the home to B. Arthur, Betty White, Rue McClanahan, and Estelle Getty. Those are our Emmy award-winning Golden Girls. On the exteriors of the house are shot right here in our back lot and then edited together with interior footage. That is shot on a soundstage in Burbank, California. The end result is what you see every Saturday night on NBC television. And once a house has been chosen for a shoot, production designers to come in to give it a little bit more of a lived-in look. You can see they've been hard at work on this blue house on your left. Notice all the toys in the yard, the flying out front, frisbee on the roof, basketball court, even those scope marks on the garage, all little things that can tell us about the family that's supposed to live there. Uh, you might also notice that part of the house is kind of dirty and old looking. Well, that's not layers of dirt and grime, it's just paint. And it didn't take years and years to create that effect, only about two hours. And we have a lot of magic we can pull out of our house here on the back left. Right here on your right, not something you'll find in every neighborhood. This is our Bulldog Cafe, a 1930s style diner from the movie The Rocketeer. If you don't recognize the title of that film, that's okay. It's not out yet. It's due for release a little bit later on this summer. You might want to take a look off to your left as we do around the corner and get a view of our New York Street. We will come back to this a little bit later in the tour, but right now we're going to go deeper into our back lot. Right now I like to say hi to everyone in the back of the shuttle. How are you guys doing back there? Yeah, there's a real person up here talking to you. I'm up here in the red shirt, brown hair, single. Hi, how you doing? I want you to know you're keeping up with us very well back there, and we didn't forget about you, okay? Yeah. Take a look out to your left here. You'll see our Muppet Vision 3D Theater. Now, it's not open yet, but it will be opening up a little bit later this spring. There are Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, and all of their Muppet friends will be creating havoc once again in their newest Muppet Adventure. It's a lot of fun. We'll be opening up a little bit later on this spring. As we round the corner, we're going to pull into our boneyard. And no, this is not where Pluto buries his bones. It's where we store all kinds of large props like cars, trains, planes, boats, even an occasional spaceship parks itself here. You might recognize some of these props. Dumbo Circus Wagon is from 
Got those flying circuits on the Disney Channel. Behind it are three of the seven blue cars driven by Detective Eddie Valiant in the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Now, they were all the same car in the movie, but just in different stages of distraction. And the one in the middle is the one Roger got his hands on. The tail section of the airplane is from the 1943 classic Casablanca, starring Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman. That was the actual plane used in the final farewell scene of the movie. We do have the front part of that plane, but it's over in a great movie ride. So you might want to visit that attraction today before leaving the park. The Blue Helicopter Concert is from the movie Blue Thunder, starring Wayne Scheider. You might want to know that that cockpit never did leave the ground. It was used only for the flight sequences, or for the ground sequences. Coming past this construction wall, here's an old wooden keel boat. That's from the Disney film The Treasures of Montecumbe. Now you might be wondering why we, we would keep around something so old and grungy looking. Well, it's kind of near and dear to our heart. You see, that film was the first one ever shot on Walt Disney World Florida property, and it was behind the Contemporary Resort Hotel on Bay Lake. That was 13 years before our studios even opened back in 1976. This orange and red trolley car, that's the Pacific Electric 717 from the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Now take a close look at the steel rails. I'll let you in on a little secret. They are fiberglass. Behind them are steel belted radial bus tires. That's a bus. We modified it to look like a trolley car for the movie. It's a little bit easier, a lot less expensive than laying trolley tracks down all over our back lot. And you see that blue and white yacht back there? That's uh, just a boat. That's nothing. It wasn't even the SS Minnow. I'd like to clear up that con misconception right now. These two silver space bonds, they're from the 1986 Touchstone film, The Light of the Navigator. And you might notice one has an opening in it. That was used for all the ground scenes that actors climbed in and out of. The other one is fully enclosed, and that was used for all the flight sequences. It was hung in front of a blue screen to create the flying effect. If you take the Inside the Magic, that's our special effects and production door, you'll learn more about the blue screen and how it works. Those large red and yellow colorful gears, they're from the final climatic scene of the movie, Dick Tracy, just beyond them. And across the canal, you get a nice backstage view of our residential street houses. Yes, it does get a little bit drafty in there, but here in the back lot, we can even control the weather. Keep that in mind, you'll see what I mean in just a moment. Notice, though, that all the architectural details in our houses, like the shingles up on the roof, they end just outside the camera's range. That's because we only build what the camera needs to see. It's an old movie-making technique called saving money. But what if the camera needed to see something that wasn't out there? What if there was an environment we needed for a film that you couldn't find in Central Florida? For example, an active oil field in the middle of a dry, rocky, barren desert canyon. You wouldn't find one of those anywhere near Orlando, unless you came here, up to our back lot, because we included one when we built the studios. Now, normally only production crews are allowed inside there, but they've taken the day off, gone to the Easter Parade over at the Magic Kingdom, so we've gotten special permission to come in here and take a look around. Now, you will notice that we are going to go over a very bumpy bridge once we do get inside the canyon, so it is very important that you do remain seated, especially during this part of the tour, and please keep a real real take care of all your personal belongings, your kids, your cameras, purses, small children, that kind of thing. John will pull us all the way in and stop, see if us can take some pictures if you'd like. And I'll tell you a few things about the canyon. Well, first of all, I can tell you that all of the props inside here, they are all real. That drilling and rigging equipment, that came from an abandoned oil well in Texas. The oil tanker up there, that's real too. And in fact, it drives perfectly well. Of course, we couldn't drive it into the canyon. There are no roads in here. So we had to use a crane to hoist it up over the back wall, place it down onto the ravine, and we did set the parking brake, I think. Directors from Hollywood, they're picky about a lot of things. When they want something to happen, it's going to happen right on cue. For example, the script called for a torrential downpour. Even on the tape like today, we can't wait around for Mother Nature. Time is money. When the cameras are ready to roll, that rain has got to be ready to fall. And it does have to fall right on cue. Okay, guys, the rain, please. All right. We do create this illusion using high-pressure water sprinklers. They're located right above your head, outside the camera's range. They spray the water out in a circular motion to give it a more natural wind line effect. Although it does look like it's raining over the entire canyon, it's just a wall of rain that ends about where Team one. No, not team one. That's the oil. Oh, oh. Uh, just remain calm, everyone. Uh, guys, can you cut the sea, please? There's a. 
Right now, though, take a look down through Washington Square Archway. You'll get a nice view of our New York City skyline. Although those buildings way down at the end look like the real thing, they're just painted flats. Only a few inches thick and only about a block and a half away. It's an old movie making technique called First Perspective. The real Empire State Building is well over 100 stories tall. Ours is just a little bit over four. Unfortunately, though, this does bring us to the very end of our tour. Please remain seated until the shuttle comes to a complete stop and the doors have fully opened and stopped moving. Then follow Roger Rabbit's pink footsteps out through the loony bin to Mickey Avenue. If you take your first right, that will take you out to New York Street. So please do not go behind the shuttle into the street that we just came through. That is very dangerous, and we don't want to send you home with that rundown feeling, okay? Once again, though, on behalf of our driver, John, everyone say thanks, John! My name's Alana. We'd like to thank you for joining us here in the backstage studio. You're welcome. We'd like to thank you for joining us on the backstage studio tour. And enjoy the rest of your day at the Disney MGM Studios. Please do step out beyond the blue poles as the doors will be coming down right behind you. Now, people sitting on the left, I would laugh to my...